Hello everyone, welcome to my Resident Evil 5 Professional Difficulty, no upgrade slash no store slash no infinite ammo walkthrough, and this is chapter 5 too, and this is a chapter that Seraphim17 hates to such a degree that I just question why he hates it, and apparently the reason why he hates it is because of the guys with guns, but I'm so confused as to why he hates them, because Resident Evil 5's gun guys are perfectly fine, they are not as bullcrap as the Juavos from Resident Evil 6, because they don't stunlock you to death, all they do is just kill you. They actually flinch, um, properly, compared to certain moments with the Juavo where they don't flinch. And they have to fire twice and then they reload. Like, there's a perfect balance with the uh, gun guys that is perfectly achieved in this game. Like, every single section with the guns is perfectly fine, except for one. And it's the rotating platform section in Chapter 5-3. That one is a little bit more challenging. But for the most part, every other section that, in that involves guns is perfectly fine. Everything in it works perfectly. I mean, the only thing you got to be aware of is that these guys, because of the fact that they're using projectile-based weapons, they will fire through certain small cracks in the geometry. So bear that in mind. But the good news is that you can at least do the same. And that right there is very dangerous as well. They can prolong their uh, their barrage of bullets whenever you shoot their head off. That's the only dangerous thing about the guns that I don't really agree with. But all you gotta do is just avoid hitting the head. And only hit the head when you feel like they're not going to uh, do that move. Now this spawn here, you trigger it by going there. And instead of dealing with them directly, I'm going to hide around this corner here. Because the gun guys will try to rush you and they're... There's also a bunch of stun rod guys that will try to rush you as well. They're the ones who are going to attack you first. The gun guys are a little bit slower, but they will still rush you very fast. So be be very careful. And oh, Sheva's going to be providing cover, which is awesome. And thankfully the uh, AK-74 is uh, a little bit more damaging than the VZ, I believe. So she can kill these enemies rather quickly. And I'm just waiting... Just don't get caught reloading. I had one moment where the enemies weren't coming for a while, so I took the time to reload, and then the moment I started reloading, this guy came through. <laughs> it was one of the funniest moments ever, because they perfectly timed it. Ah, but this strategy is flawless. There's no fault with it whatsoever. So long as you have the ammo necessary to stun them. And knock them back. And the gun guys should be arriving soon. There they are. And because, of course, this is a professional difficulty, they will not prioritize Sheva. If you play on the other difficulties, they will prioritize Sheva. In fact, I think that's intentional. I think Capcom intentionally made the other difficulties like that to force you to play professional difficulty. But it kind of backfired because that's when pe they started to use uh, the store a lot. That's when people started to use the infinite ammo a lot. And it uh, definitely backfired. And... <laughs> Capcom didn't really think that through. But uh, I've dealt with most of the gun guys. I'm opening the door slowly just in case there's a guy behind. And the one thing that's very dangerous about the enemies on this game is they don't have any kind of way to open the door. They just kind of run through the door and the door just opens magically. It's And it's done that way to stop you from trying to use the door to your advantage. Because in Resident Evil 4, because of the fact that the enemies had to do a specific animation to open the door, you could easily tell when you were supposed to stand behind the door and just use your shotgun to obliterate them. And it was a very powerful strategy in Resident Evil 4, but they've really tried to stop people from doing that by removing that animation the enemies do to open the door. And this guy here, he has a lot more health than usual, I don't know why. It's like, you'll notice, he's just taking a beating right now, more so than the normal Machini. And he finally dies. And we're coming up on another section that has a bunch of gun guys, and it's another really fun section. So, at the beginning, when you trigger the spawn, there's going to be a stone rod guy that rushes you. He will turn into a cephalo every time, so you need to make sure Sheva doesn't have any ammo so that she doesn't uh, accidentally trigger him, and you need to make sure you do the neck breaker as well. So he's rushing. There he is. And I'm just going to wait until he gets up and just shoot him in the leg and uh, finish him off. Simple. 
can't not believe Seraphim17 hates this section. <laughs> he even went as far as to criticize Resident Evil 6. And he's like, oh, the action in Resident Evil 6 isn't done that well, the combat is trash. <laughs> well, if you watch his walkthrough Resident Evil 6, he displays 8% of what you can do with the combat mechanics in Resident Evil 6. <laughs> the guy completely ignored using the counter mechanics. He was using very inferior strategies against the enemies. And he practically just ran through a lot of sections, and he put himself in a lot of spots for him to be hit by the enemies. <laughs> so as Resident Evil 5 and Resident Evil 6 walkthroughs are equally crap. But just look at this. I mean, Fascinator did say he doesn't like that uh, the gun guys can fire at the same time, and it almost makes it impossible for you to, uh, to shoot them. But that situation is... Hardly ever an issue. That's very rare for that to happen, and the only time that ever happens is if you yourself uh, shoot the enemy, but not actually kill it, because then you might accidentally cause the enemy to sync up with another enemy. So yeah, I would have to disagree with Fascinator there on that. <laughs> I'm still going to maintain the belief that the gun guys on this game are perfectly balanced. They're nowhere near as bullcrap as the Juavos from Resident Evil 6. I have countless live streams and also videos of the of the bullcrap the Juavos can actually do to you with their guns. So the next section coming up is a section involving liquors. This is a section you can stealth, but make sure you're very close to your AI partner, because if you're too far away from your AI partner, they have a very high chance of getting spotted by the liquors, because they have this tendency of walking into the liquors at times, whenever you're far away from them, because they're trying to fulfill the command of cover, and so the command of cover involves them having to be very close to you, and that oftentimes puts themselves in the position to get detected by the liquors, like right now. That unfortunately happened, because I got too far away from my AI partner. But it at least gave me an excuse to use the herb so I can clear up my inventory. And watch this, by the way. What? Watch this. Did you see that? How did I not get hit by that liquor just then? That is absolutely baffling. There is no reason for me to have not taken a hit just then. The claw went right through me, I wasn't in any kind of animation to give me iframes. Yet somehow I avoided a hit. That is absolutely bizarre. So this section here, it is actually possible to skip the spawn by uh, dropping down and then uh, keeping your camera n not facing the uh, two enemies down there. But that only works on co-op, it doesn't work on solo because uh, Sheva is looking at the enemies as she's walking with you. So she will trigger them. Instead, I'm going to use uh, Lightning Fidelis' awesome strategy. Which basically involves you standing in this corner. And you have to get rid of this guy because he can shoot you in this corner. And then once he's dead, th the rest of this is very simple. Just make sure there isn't another enemy sitting in that corner. You're going to have a bunch of guys just shooting their guns, but they will miss you. There's going to be uh, those two guys uh, down below who are just going to uh, try to rush you. But it's not too much of an issue. So just take your shots when you can. And these guys are just using the dodge cleverly to avoid my sniper rifle shots. I'm just amazed they can see me aiming at them. <laughs> That's such an AI thing. Somehow they just know to dodge when they don't even know I'm aiming at them. <laughs> so bizarre. <laughs> but we, I've almost cleared out the enemies. There's one guy just down there, but I can't see him. Oh, and, and there's also this guy. Just... Just finish him off. Alright, there he goes. So that's the end of those guys who are just going to keep rushing me. There's still, uh... That guy. There's another guy just down below. There's th there's him firing at me right now, and somehow I missed so many of my sniper rifle shots on him, even though I'm it literally looks like I'm hitting his head. Which is very bizarre, and... He gets some hits in on me, unfortunately, but at least that allows me to use the green orbs. I think it's because he's wearing a helmet? It's hard to tell because I can't see his head. Yeah, he's wearing a helmet, that's why. So I, I wasn't missing, I just kept hitting his helmet. That's still bizarre that they don't make any kind of reaction to the sniper rifle when you just hit them in the metal head. <laughs> that does, doesn't make any sense with me at all because it's a sniper rifle. It has a tremendous amount of velocity to it. It should at least, like, disorient them, but no, it just causes no reaction. Just so goofy and weird. 
And, and look, look at this. It's This is the same guy again, and I'm just missing all my shots. <laughs> I'm just thankful I didn't fail the accuracy stat, because I do recover a lot from just uh, shooting the other enemies and also the boss coming up. And uh, speaking of which, the boss of this section is a very strange boss, because it's a boss that comes across as being very broken. But uh, I figured out a good strategy for dealing with him without the incendiary grenades, and I wanted to do it with the, uh, without the uh, incendiary grenades, because what if you didn't have the incendiary grenades? You know, one of the main reasons why this boss is very, very broken, or it gives the impression that it's very broken, is because the flamethrower doesn't stun him, it doesn't put him into his weakened state, there are times when the incendiary grenades don't do anything, there are times when he will not flinch from the uh, propane tank when it's inside of him, but uh, there's a reason for that, and I'll definitely explain when I get to the boss fight. And those factors together make this boss feel very broken. But I think there's some intention behind it. I think there's no intention behind the fact that the incendiary grenades can't stun him sometimes. But I think it's probably intentional that they make it so that the flamethrower doesn't put him into the weakened state, because then it'd be too easy. You know, maybe they changed that. I think in the PS3 version it worked a little differently, and then they decided to change it for the PS4 version. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I wish it was uh, possible to do uh, with the flamethrower. We're just putting him into the weakened states, but sadly you can't do that. Instead, you have to rely on the propane tanks if, you don't, if you're not using the incendiary grenades. And uh, here's a really cool mechanic right here. You can shoot the grenade packs that are on an enemy's chest and it will blow them up instantly. I can't think of a single game where that is a mechanic, where you can shoot the bandolier of an enemy's uh, like grenade pack and just uh, blow them up. Resident Evil 5 is the only game where I, that I know of where this is a thing. I mean, Resident Evil 6 kind of had this uh, mechanic, but it wasn't quite as prominent as it is in Resident Evil 5. Yeah, but that is a really cool thing to note. It's going to allow you to clear out the enemies and save a lot of ammo. So you're going to have guys above who are throwing uh, grenades at you. You're going to have guys down below who are going to rush you, but you can use the uh, explosives that are just uh, on the conveyor belt to your advantage. And uh, something you need to know about the shield guys who rush you, if you run all the way back to the mantle point, they won't actually follow you up that mantle point, and they will just kill themselves with the uh, conveyor belt. And just go into the incinerator, which is pretty interesting. Oh, and also, did you notice that Sheva was running forward? That happens occasionally. I think it's because she's trying to pick up items that are on the other side of the conveyor belt. But that's a problem because she can put herself into uh, a dangerous spot. So always make sure you call her back if she's running forward. It's not too much of an issue. And somehow she's not doing it again. I'm not too sure why. Maybe it's because the item despawned. That's a... Uh, one thing I don't like about Resident Evil 4, 5, and 6, the ammo drops can despawn, and I don't know why. There's no reason for them to despawn. It's really unfair that they can do that. I think it's because the game can't handle having ammo drops in uh, huge abundance just sitting on the ground. Uh, which is the only reason I can think of as to why the ammo drops would despawn after a while. Oh, and this is a little dangerous right now. If you don't get to the other side of the conveyor belt fast enough, uh, the enemies will still spawn. Uh, Fascinator mentioned that there's about five waves uh, to the uh, ground floor enemies. Hmm. But they do feel kind of infinite, though. You can stop the waves from happening if you just get to the other side very quickly. <laughs> and that, that guy tried to jump down onto nothing. <laughs> very funny. But at least that allowed me to deal the finishing blow to him. And we are very close to the end of uh, Chapter 5 too, but I'm going to give Sheva the SIG, because the SIG is the uh, the uh, better alternative to uh, the weapon she has, because I think it does a little bit more damage, and it has a little bit more ammo to it. And now we are going to move on to uh, another area, and we are going to be dealing with a new enemy type, which is the Reaper. So the Reaper is an infected cockroach. That basically got exposed to uh, or the Ouroboros mutation. And it has the ability to regenerate its lost limbs. And you can't kill it unless you shoot its weak spots or if you use uh, explosives. I mean, it's only the rocket launcher that can actually kill it. Uh, you, can't, you can use grenades, but they don't actually kill it. They just weaken it so that it's uh, near death. 
But the, the Reaper is uh, a pretty interesting enemy. It's one of my favorite enemy types. Because it's properly balanced. And I actually discovered a method for dealing with the Reapers very easily while I was making this walkthrough. And I'll demonstrate it in Chapter 5-3 when I get the chance. So the Reaper, he exposes his weak spots after a certain amount of time. And if you shoot the weak spots, it gives you a very hard stun. And then you can chain weak, chain weak spot hits and he will eventually go into a... Uh, a stun state where he's just uh, moving back and forth and you can just hit his uh, stomach and he will eventually die. But rather than uh, dealing with this Reaper, I'm just going to run past him because there's no point in wasting time with him. Because of course I'm going for S rank. And also it's just better to run past him in general. So hit the switch. Uh, the the uh, bodies on the conveyor belt, uh, some of them are alive. So watch out. You're not too much of an issue so long as your uh, AI partner is nearby. And you, and you can also break free from their grabs. But for the most part, just try to avoid their grabs. And we are coming up on the boss of Chapter 5 too. And the method I'm going to use against the boss is... Uh, <laughs> a method that uh, is probably crazy for a lot of people. I don't think... Lightning Fidelis, or Fascinator, or Dragon Belmont, or Ellen0325. I don't think they would ever do such a strategy like I'm about to do right now. <laughs> because the strategy I'm about to use is completely dependent upon the AI's ability to shoot. I'm basically going to give uh, Sheva the handgun. I'm going to uh, give her uh, 100 reserve bullets. I'm going to uh, basically use the flamethrower to stun the boss when he... Uh, Gets the, fight, the propane tank inside of him. And Chev is going to destroy the weak spots for me. Because I found a really good strategy that works. And it works very consistently. So long as you put yourself in the right spots. And you do it in the correct order. But I'm just fumbling around with the inventory right now. I'm not a big fan of the way the inventory works. Uh, because like swapping items between your characters. Uh, at times the game disables certain uh, mechanics. Like the exchange system. Because of... The fact that you have an open open space or other things like the inventory system is kind of clunky. I really wish they refined it a little bit better. But anyway, the boss fight is about to begin now. So at the beginning, you need to time this boss out so that the flamethrower is active. You can use the music to your advantage to know when you should go to for the flamethrower. So this boss is uh, basically the same boss from chapter one two, only he's a lot more uh, ferocious, as Sheva describes, and. He has a lot more life, and he cannot be killed with bullets. You've got to stun him with the flamethrower after uh, he gets the propane tank inside of him, and then you can actually use your bullets to uh, destroy his weak spots. Either that, or if you have a rocket launcher from uh, Chapter 3-1, or if you just purchase it, he'll die instantly. But why the heck would you want to use a store? Well, because you're a coward. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> You know, just being so over reliant on the store is not going to help you progress through Resident Evil 5 and understand it better. Like, what the strategy you're about to see right now is the result of several hours worth of studying. Maybe even several days worth of studying, just trying to understand this boss. And it does work. I've definitely understood this boss a lot better after all the studying I've been doing. And it's th at this point in the music that the flamethrower is ready. So try to get to the flamethrower, and you're going to want to go for the uh, propane tank that is in this direction. You want the boss to come from uh, the side that I'm facing right now. I'm trying to get him over here, and he's coming right now. So uh, drop the propane tank, and bear in mind, Shadow will take shots at the boss. Uh, stop her from doing that, because she just tries to shoot the arms, because you can... Uh, dismember this guy's limbs, but he just regenerates them, so there's no point. So he's now uh, assimilated himself with the uh, propane tank. I'm going to lure him over here. You want to do this in this order. You need to go for the weak spot that's on his right side first. And he can't hit you uh, around this corner, so just hit him immediately. And then you need to basically go back and forth between hitting his center mass and hitting the weak spot. Sheva's going to prioritize this weak spot a lot, because it's the weak spot that's most accessible to her at the moment. That's why you need to do it this way. So that she prioritizes this weak spot she could, because she can prioritize multiple weak spots and that's not what you want there goes the first weak spot and now we're on to the second weak spot and there's something important you need to note about the uh second phase 
after you destroy the first weak spot, the boss gains access to a counter animation that he does whenever you try to use the flamethrower on him. And he can use that counter animation to bypass the stun state that the propane tank uh, gives him whenever you shoot it. So when you get the flamethrower, try to hit him immediately with the with the flames. I unfortunately make that mistake, but thankfully, I do not end up hitting the, the propane tank. And that was very dangerous just then. And unfortunately, Yashev is about to get hit because he does a move you can't dodge. That is a move right there that you cannot dodge with a quick time event, so Sheva couldn't avoid it. All because I was too close to him. And, what? <laughs> do not make this mistake. I almost shot the propane tank this then without triggering this counter animation. And he's moving away from me right now, and yeah. <laughs> that was a big mistake. I, I was almost half tempted to stop the fight and just uh, restart it. But, I already committed to the strategy, so I'm just doing it. And there goes the second weak spot, and then the third weak spot will just die very fast. The Flamebearer does do damage to the weak spots, but it doesn't do a lot of damage. It's the bullets that mainly do damage to the weak spot. And thankfully, he does not have access to the counter animation in the third phase. It's only in the second phase. And once again, I am glad that I did not hit that propane tank just then. Because otherwise, I would have had to restart this entire fight. Like, I understand the whole point of that counter animation, it's there to defy expectations, because you're not expecting him to do it when you're using the flamethrower, but don't make it so that he can hyper-armor through the propane tank. That, that doesn't make any sense to me at all. There's, It's just straight-up cheating. And that's why you need to trigger that counter animation with the flamethrower. So this last propane tank right here, you have to get it so that you're behind the boss as he's picking up the propane tank, because the last weak spot is behind him. And uh, right here, uh, he tries to attack me, because every time he teleports, he has a tendency of doing an attack animation immediately. And uh, all I'm just waiting for is for him to go down this path here, but his pathing path uh, is a little awkward, because he can't do very sharp turns, because he's using a tank control based system to actually move. So his movement's not very fluid. But he's, uh, he's going for the propane tank right now, I've, you've got to get behind him very fast. And just, sh just shoot him immediately. And just stun him. And that is the end of this boss fight. A boss fight that I originally hated so much, but now I'm starting to like it a lot better now that I actually understand the design behind it. And stay tuned for uh, future chapters. Thank you all for watching, and you take care now.